uh, secret police or CIA. Uh, over 350 Iraqi scientists and more than 200 academics have been eliminated. And this is the standard for enforcing an occupation. You eliminate those individuals who could pose a threat to the agenda of the occupiers. Um, initially, Mossad and U.S. forces approached scientists, Iraqi scientists in Iraq, and they said, hey, will you come work for us? And if they refused, then they would, their lives would be in danger. So they either became refugees or they could be uh, eliminated. But either way, Iraq cannot uh, rebuild itself and remains uh, subject to oppression. Uh, and the Mossad is also training the Kurdish forces in the north. Uh, their commandos, back in 2005, I don't know if that base is still in place because I haven't seen anything to confirm or deny it, but in 2005, the Mossad was operating out of a heavily guarded base in northern Iraq. They are training the Peshmerga, which are the Kurdish militias, and again, this is under the cover of private military companies. Now, why would they be training Kurdish forces? because the Israelis have long time been allied with the Kurds. Um, and they would, as sort of a, the Kurds in opposition to uh, the Ba'athist regime, were looking for allies who will help them. And they chose the Israelis, among others. So the Peshmerga uh, actually moved south with US forces during the invasion in 2003. The Kurdish forces continued to occupy uh, provinces southern uh, to the northern region. And there are many abuses against non-Kurdish Iraqis, and this is essentially ethnic cleansing that's going on in Iraq, uh, sanctioned by the American occupation. Uh, and this is, again, all you can break it down for us in the US is Sunni Shia Kurd, but there's so much diversity in Iraq. Turkmen, Chaldeo Assyrians, Armenian Christians, Shabaks, Yazidis, and of course, Arabs. It's far more complicated. Now, why else would the Israelis arm the Kurdish forces? because they need that area of Iraq for hitting Iran, and this is why. You see, Israel well, occupied Palestine is over here. Tehran is all the way over here. This is a very convenient site for refueling if you want to attack Iran. Uh, one more factor of how it's uh, American-Israeli joint operations in both places. Israel has a national urban training center in the United States. I don't know why, but the Israelis call it Chicago, but it's not Chicago. Uh, it was built by the US Army uh, Corps of Engineers. I, I apologize, the, the training center is in Israel, but built by the US Army Corps of Engineers and funded by US military aid, so that's American tax dollars. At the time that this article came out in the Marine Corps Times in 2007, they said US Marines will be training there soon. And training for US Marines began at the center at the beginning of 2009. Now, what they do at this center, as this uh, report indicated, was that Israeli forces were training for four theaters, Gaza, Lebanon, the West Bank, and Syria. And this article quoted, with the reasonable likelihood of another war on Israel's northern front, perhaps by summer's end, according to some intelligence estimates here. Well, this was 2007, and the assault did not happen on the northern front. You all saw it, Operation Cast Lead, the operations, the assault, the massacres in Gaza. So finally, just closing with the goal here for justice is to end the entire occupation. The Middle East, as I started out telling you about, this is the legacy of colonialism. This is what the uh, Western powers have brought to this part of the world. The domination, and of the rest of the world as well, domination of indigenous peoples by the West to control the resources of Western Asia, mainly the oil. Now, above the door to the Knesset, the Israeli Congress, there is a sign that reads, Our land Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates. If you want to try to occupy from the Nile to the Euphrates, then you're going to get resistance from the Nile to the Euphrates. And now the story's getting good. People have been fighting for years and years and making so much sacrifice. For over 60 years, resistance in Palestine. For over 20 years, resistance in Iraq. Tunisia is rising up. Egypt is rising up. And I get to finish my talk before Hosni makes his. Jordan is rising up, Yemen is rising up, and this is to be continued. So let us see what unfolds in the next few days. 
Now I'm going to borrow a quote from Malcolm X, who talked about house Negroes versus field Negroes. The house Arabs, we have them. Every, every, uh, every occupation has its collaborators. But this on your left is the six-story apartment building uh, that is owned by Hosni Mubarak's son. Don't worry, he's there. He's there already. His family is there. Downtown London, I heard very close to Harrods, so very nice shopping for him. So there are benefits, personal benefits, to selling out your people. And on your right is a mansion owned by Nouri al-Maliki, the current prime minister in Iraq. Now, you may have, in the short term, some nice money and power benefits, but in the long term, it will catch up with you, and you can't take any of this with you. So with the house Arabs, they collaborate with their masters, the occupiers, but in the field, things are a little bit different because they are suffering. These are what I would call field Arabs. These are the Egyptian people that, though they have had a cordial relationship with the military thus far, they're not taking any chances. They are sitting in the threads of the army's tank, making sure there are no sudden movements. And if I could just point out to you, this young man uh, was probably uh, your age, uh, age of many of you are younger. He has one shoe. You see from the sole of his foot that this has been the circumstance for quite some time. That's the suffering on the ground, and that's why the people are rising up. Now, this is actually some beautiful artistry right here. I mean, these are people just taking random pieces of cement and putting them together to make art. Um, and as I explained to my audiences at home, if they're writing it for other Egyptians, they will write it in Arabic. The English is for people like me who don't speak Arabic, and the rest of the West. Divide and conquer, they're still trying it today, but there are some beautiful images. The Egyptians are on to the Americans. This, these are Christians in Egypt, protecting their brothers while they pray, their Muslim brothers. And this is an image, they're on to them. Don't you try to divide us by religion. Uh, Muslim man on your left and a Coptic Christian on your right. So they are doing their best to prevent the external divisions. Now this is the picture of the Iraqi soccer team winning the Asia Cup in 2007. Now if you want, you can go online and you can find out which players were Sunni and which were Shia and which were Kurdish, but it doesn't really matter to them. So it shouldn't matter to the rest of us. So people are continuing to struggle. They continue to hold on to their dignity, which the oppressors are trying to take from them with all of their might. So they continue, they continue to fight for respect for their humanity. So as long as they won't give up, we cannot give up. Those who are under oppression are persisting for justice. Their supporters, which I'd like to include myself in that category, despite the country that I'm coming from, we're persisting for justice. The whole world is persisting for justice. Together, we can achieve justice. And for those of you who are students, I went through uh, almost completely my medical training until that train completely derailed because basically I went into medicine because that's what my, my parents wanted me to do. Uh, but it was an extremely hip hypocritical position to be in. I was living the American dream, paying taxes that were raining down as missiles and suffering on people that I didn't even know. And I couldn't live with that anymore. My parents were not happy when I left medicine. Um, but uh, they basically are financially supporting me today so I can do what I am passionate about. I do believe, if we can get a little bit philosophical here, that everyone has a gift to give this world. Uh, and uh, you can ch it's up to you how you use that gift. You can use it for good or you can use it for evil. But I believe that if we, more of us, make the choice to use for good, and that's really all we have to control in this world, then we will see positive changes continue. So whatever your goal is, wherever your passion lies, don't you dare give up until your mission is accomplished. Thank you all so much for your